to hear it. Uh huh. To mix it, move it, make it. Here we go. B A M B I N O. Bambino. Let's go, Bambino. Hello, Bambinos, and welcome back. We hope you enjoyed our episode last week, and we would love to welcome you to our episode. I hope all our bambinos are doing very well and is so excited about our this week's episode. This week's theme is "What Would Jesus Do?" You know, we have heard that phrase so many times, and today we're going to learn what it means. So, before we get started, let's go and learn our Bible verse. Are you guys ready? Let's do this together and let's get this episode started, my bambinos. You guys ready? One, two, three. Here we go. Let's go and learn our Bible verse. Hi, bambinos. You are most welcome to this new episode of Bambino program from Divine Retreat Center, Ramsgate. And on this day, we are going to learn a new Bible passage, and the new Bible passage is Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 13. The Word of God goes like this: No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. So, my dear children, Jesus laid down His life for us because He loved us as His own, and we are called. to lay our life for others in every situation where you are in please remember what would jesus do wwjd don't forget this word wwjd what would jesus do may god bless you enjoy this day i think i can remember that one sentence in my head all day What would Jesus do? No, silly. The Bible verse that Father Joseph taught us. I don't think I could lay my whole life, my whole awesome life down for anyone. But that's why God sent his only son so that we might live. But Bambinos, in every situation, we need to remember and ask ourselves what would jesus do bambolinos let's visit a school you might not think it's cool but let's see what happens when we look at things through the eyes of jesus Hey bambinos, how you all doing? I have a great story for you today. So I'm sure that all of you have heard the story or read the story of the good Samaritan. But what is that story like in today's world in school? Well, let's find out. One day, Shaham was in school and was given very hard work. He needed help, so had decided to ask the teacher Jeremiah, stop swinging on your. Why do you have a book on your face? The disrespect! Sorry, Miss Lauren. <laughs> Shh. Shh! How many times do I tell you to be quiet? Shh. And juice, Shobby, we are not allowed to have juice in school. These kids. <sighs> right, we only have exactly five minutes left. Only five minutes. I can't do this. I haven't even done one question. There's nothing I can do. I really need help. Maybe if I ask Miss Lauren for some help, she will help me. Miss Lauren. Mhm. I'm really struggling with this work that you gave me. I'm finding it hard. I can't do it. I need your help. Okay. Let's see. 
Oh wait, we've done this question. Actually, we've done. I've taught it to you three times. How many times do I repeat myself? And how many times do you not understand? I am fed up of teaching you the same thing. You do not understand because you're not listening. You know what? I give up. With great difficulty, Shahan tried to do the work. He kept getting the questions wrong. He knew that the only way to get the work done is with some help. He then decided to ask Shobby to help him. Shobby, I really need help with this homework. Miss didn't even help me. Can you please help me? Go away, Sean. I don't want to help you. You've never helped me. Why should I? Unfortunately, his hope was flattened at the rejection of Shobby. Shahan felt very sad, but still had hope that someone would help him, so continued looking around the classroom. Shahan then felt that perhaps Krishtika would help him, as she is normally very kind. Psst. Psst. Krishtika, I really need help with this homework. The teacher didn't help me. Shobby didn't help me. Please, can you help me? John, I'm so sorry. I don't think I can help you because I've got so much to do and I don't think I have time. I'm sure someone else can help you. Unfortunately, once again, he was rejected. Shahan was feeling rejected, but still, with a tiny flicker of hope, looks around one last time. Hey, hey, Stina. No. Hey, Gabby. No. Poor Shahan, feeling completely shattered and broken, started crying bitterly. But then, Jeremiah saw how broken Shahan was. So what he then decided to do was beautiful. He did what nobody else did. Hey, bro. What's going on, man? I see you crying from there. I'm really struggling with this work. Miss never helped me, none of my classmates helped me. I'm really, I can't even do one question, it's really hard for me. I'll help you, let me show you, man. Come on, see this? Two plus two, minus one, two, five again. Oh, That's thank it. you so much. Everyone rejected me, but you helped me. Thank you so much. Thank you for sacrificing your time for me. After Shahan had received help, he was so happy, filled with joy. He felt valued again. He was no longer rejected. Bambinos, you have now seen how each person reacted to Shahan's request. But then let us now ask each of them why they reacted in the way that they did. So, we now start off with Miss Lauren, who reacted to Shahan by rejecting him angrily. Hey, Miss Lauren. Hello. How are you doing? So, Shahan wanted to ask you for help first, but you reacted in a, diff in a different way. Why is that? It's easy. Students like him don't listen. So if they listen to me and listen to the hard work I put in and give to them, they will understand. And it's frustrating because I put so much effort in at home and at school and my students don't respect me. That's why. Okay, thank you. So, Miss Lauren's problem was patience. She did not have enough patience to help Shahan. But what about Shobita? Why did Shobita reject Shahan? Hi Shobi, how are you doing? Hi. So, Shahan also asked you for help, but how come you responded in the way that you did? But he never helps me, so why should I help him? Mm. I have to do my work, I need to get 100% so my mom won't shout at me. So, so for Shobita, it was her family. She cared about herself, and what she got before others. She put herself in front of others. But what about Krishtika? She's a good student. Surely a good student would help anyone. Let's ask her why she didn't help. Hey Krish, how are you doing? So Krishtika, you're a good student, right? You'd be happy to help anyone. But why was it different in this situation? so much to do and I was really 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 stressed and I was scared if I wouldn't finish on time so I had to focus on myself and had to finish it so I can get it marked and get good grades. Okay Krish, thank you. 
So Krishnika's problem was fear. She was scared that she wouldn't finish her work. So she put again, she put herself in front of Jean. So what about Jeremiah? Jeremiah was different. Why everyone else rejected Sean, Jeremiah helped him, accepted his request. So let's ask him why. Hey Jeremiah, how are you doing? So Jeremiah, everyone rejected Sean, and easily you could have too. But why? Why did you decide to help him instead? You know, I just did what Jesus would do. When Jesus would see someone in need, Jesus would go and help. And I know that Jesus was crying when he saw Shihan sit like that in pain, you know, and no one was helping him. I just did that. And it's said in the Bible, St. Paul says it uh, to the uh, Galatians. He says that you obey the law of Christ when you help others. So I helped him and I obeyed the law of Christ. Thank you, Jeremiah. Yes, yes, so you see, my dear Bambinos, what Jeremiah did was he wanted to do what Christ would do. He wanted to do what Jesus would do. He wanted to help Sean out of compassion, out of love, out of kindness. And so Bambinos, I have a challenge for you. I want you to do this. When you see someone that is struggling, someone that is in need of help, someone that is crying, whether it's in school, whether it's outside of school, I challenge you to go and help them. Breathe the light in their problems. Show kindness and love in their problems. And that is a challenge I have for you, my dear Bambinos. And with that, God bless. Wow. Hmm. So that's what Jesus would have done. Mm. Can you smell something? It smells so good. It's yummy-licious. Should we go and try some? Would you save me a slice? I think it's so nice that it might all go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Hello Bambinos, welcome back to Art and Craft. You know that we are making a special cake, right? And to make a special cake, there is a lot of ingredients which has to come together. Just like that, we have a lot of gifts inside us. The gifts of Holy Spirit. Do you guys remember in one of our episodes, we learned about the gifts of Holy Spirit? Say it after me. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Generosity. Faithfulness tenderness and last but not least self-control you know what bambinas through baptism we have got all this gift of holy spirit inside us and i guarantee you in each day we have to use at least one of these gifts and when you're faced with a situation just remember what would jesus do in this situation and try to implement that in that situation you are faced with. So Bambinos, are you ready to see how that special cake is being made with all that ingredients together? You know, I'm certainly ready to taste it. Let's go. Let's see what Maria is up to. Come on. Hey guys. So today, we're just not going to make something that looks pretty. We're going to make something that tastes yummy too. So it's called a marble cake. And to help us make it, we have Gabby with us. Hey Bambinos. So Gabby, today we're going to make a marble cake. And to make this, you will need 275 grams of flour, uh, four eggs, some vanilla extract. You'll need 225 grams of butter. You'll need two, table, two teaspoons of baking powder. You'll need uh, two tablespoons of milk, 225 grams of caster sugar, some hot water, and 100 and one and a half tablespoons of cocoa powder. So let's get started. Oh, before that, do we need to preheat the oven? Yes, we do. Thanks for reminding me. So we need to preheat the oven to 160 degrees gas mark three before we begin. So let's go and do that. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's begin to make our cake. So our first step is to put all the ingredients into the bowl and mix it together. So we're going to put the flour. Okay. 
and the sugar and the butter and the baking powder as well as the eggs and some of the vanilla extract. So we'll need a half teaspoon of the vanilla extract. Do you wanna put it in? So a half a teaspoon. Yeah. And now what we have to do is we need the milk too. So we'll pour the milk in. Okay, so now we have all our ingredients into this bowl. We need to mix it for some time. So. We finished mixing our cake and this is what the batter should look like. So now what we have to do is separate this mixture into another bowl. So we have half in here and half in another bowl. So we get that bowl. Now we have two bowls and half a mixture in one bowl and half in the other bowl. So now what we have to do is we get the cocoa powder and we have to add some hot water to it. So I'm going to add three teaspoons to begin with and we have to basically make a paste with it. So mix the cocoa powder in with the hot water then as you go along Add some more water to turn it into a paste. Did you get on? You added in too much water. Let's see. Oh wow. Was it not hot? Mm -hmm. It was hot. Mm -hmm. It should be fine. So we've made our chocolate paste. Now what we have to do is we pour this into one of the mixtures. So we're going to go into here and we pour the paste into this bowl. And then we just mix this in. Can you guys see the color difference between the cakes? So we have a vanilla mixture and we have a chocolate mixture. So our next step in this is to get our cake tins. So we're going to take all of this away and we'll come back in just one second. Okay, so I'm back. So we have our two mixtures and we have our two cake tins. So what we're going to do now is 
put these to the side and get our cake tins. So we're going to show you guys how you make a design for the marble cake. Okay, so what we're going to do is we need to get one of the colors. So I'm going to get the lighter color and we spoon in two spoons into the middle of the tray and we just spread that out slowly. And then we get the other color and do the exact same. Okay, so we just do the same again, but with the vanilla and then the chocolate and then the vanilla and we build it up. So when it starts to become a blob like this, we can just shake the tray so that it spreads out a bit. So Bambinos, we've finished our design. We just have one more thing to do. So we have our knife and I'm gonna show you guys what we do next. So would you like to come closer? And we'll go into this cake. What we have to do is you go to the end like this and then you draw into the middle. Then you just wipe your knife on a tissue and you do the same around the whole cake. We're going to do the exact same with the other and we're going to do the same flower design. We have our cake tins and we have our final designs. So we're going to go into the kitchen now and we're going to put them into the oven for 50 to 60 minutes. Hey guys, so we've cooked our cake. Can you see the flower design? So what we have to do now is decorate it. So make sure that your cake is completely cooled before we start. So to make the icing, we need some chocolate paste. So do you remember how we mixed the cocoa powder and the hot water together? So that's all you have to do to make this. We also need 200 grams of icing sugar and also 50 grams of butter. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix all of these together to make the icing. So let's go and do that. Oof. So Bambinos, we have our icing. Now what we have to do is we're going to start pouring this over the cake. So just take a little bit at a time and we're just going to circle it out to the ends. Once we've done this, we're going to take the other piece of cake and we're going to put this over the top of this one. Can you guys see it coming together? So now what we have to do is we're going to take the rest of the icing and pour it over the whole cake. Make sure to cover every bit of it. We've covered our cake in icing. So as you can see, I've made quite a mess. So we're going to get a tissue and just wipe off the excess icing. All we have left to do is put some sprinkles over it and we'll be done decorating. So. Hey Maria. Oh, hello. Bambinos, have you met Lauren and Stina? Hi, Come in, guys. guys. The cake looks amazing, but I think we Thank should put some Maltesers on it. Yeah, of course. Would you guys like to help me decorate? Yeah. Cool. You can do that one. Okay, and we'll zoom forward this. Should we put the sprinkles on first? Yeah, I think she put the sprinkles on the side. On and the side. Yeah, sure. Go on. ahead. So, what do you guys think of our cake? I think it looks really yum. Yeah, I think we should take it outside so the rest of them can taste it. Yeah, that's a great idea. Why don't you guys come with us? Hey guys, look, there's cake. What? Oh, so nice. Would you guys like to try some? Yes, yes please. Mmm, it tastes so good. I know, right? Thank you for sharing this with us. Yeah, thank you, because sharing actually shows that you really care, so thank you. When we use our gifts and talents to help others or to do good things for them, we imitate Jesus. Even in the little things. In every small thing, God sees everything. Especially in the smallest things. So, Bambinos, 
Remember to use your gifts and your talents to glorify God. So that everyone sees Jesus through you. So, we hope you've enjoyed this cake making session with us. We look forward to seeing all your pictures and all your designs. Remember to take the photo before you start eating the cake, okay? So, have fun Bambinos! Bye! Bye. I'm so full! Let's sit back and listen to a story of a saint. I'm so full, I think I'm a faint. Quick, quick, play the tune and listen up and hear the story of a man who was never on the moon. Ah. Basil, what are you doing? Oh, I was just reading a book. It's about World War II. World War II? Yeah, it's so sad to know. Many people died on that. You know, there is an amazing saint who lived at that time. Who Do you know that? about him? Who is that? His name is Maximilian Kobe. Maximilian who? I will tell you about him. Okay. Shall I join you? Yes, yeah, So, Bambinos, do you want to learn about Saint Maximilian Kobe as well? Come. I will teach you about them. So, Maximilian Kobe is a saint who was born in Poland. He was named Raymond. His mom's name was Maria and his father's name was Julius. And he was a weaver. He was the second of four sons. Did you know that Maximilian was someone who wanted to join the military? Oh, like the soldiers. Yes. However, when he was 12 years old, he received a vision of Our Lady. And there was two crowns. Two crowns? So was he going to be the king of two countries? Well, you would think that, right? But it meant something very different. The two crowns represented two things. One of them was symbolized by purity. It was the color white. And the second one was a red color, which was a symbol of his martyrdom. And the Virgin Mary asked him, which one would you choose? So. If you had that choice, which one would you choose? Well, I think I'll go for the white because I like the color white. You know, Maximilian actually chose both of them. Both of them? That is correct. Oh, that's so brave of him. So amazing. It was. In 1907, Kobe and his elder brother entered the Franciscan seminary. He was given a religious name and you know, he chose the name Maximilian. So, and he adopted the additional name of Virgin Mary. So, his name was Maximilian Mary Kobe. In 1912, Maximilian earned a doctorate in philosophy. You know, he was only 21 years of old. Oh, that's so young. I think he might be great intelligent. He was so smart. At the age of 28, he earned another doctorate in theology. Oh, wow. During his studies, Maximilian witnessed a secret society called the Freemasons. Who are the Freemasons? Well, I will tell you, they are so interesting. Freemasons were a group of people who wanted to completely destroy the teaching of the church and morality. And all these attacks against the church made young Kobe so sad. And him, along with six of his friends, formed a group. And it was called Soldiers of the Immaculate. Four years later, he published a press in Gorthno. The purpose of this press was to convert the enemies of the church, especially the Freemasons, with the intercession of the Virgin Mary, so that they could achieve eternal salvation. Wow, he did that. That's so unbelievable. In 1918, he was ordained a priest. His seal to promote the veneration of the Immaculate Virgin Mary and to proclaim Christ throughout the whole world grew more and more. He went proclaiming the word of God through China, India and even Japan. I guess he really loved what he was doing. He seemed very passionate about it. He really was. You know, he was so passionate when he went to Japan along with his friars. He even met the bishop and discussed about the plans of setting up a Catholic newspaper in Japan. Japan? How did he go to Japan? Did he know Japanese? No, he didn't. And you know what? That's exactly what the bishop asked him. 
and the bishop was very confused and asked, My dear father, can any of you speak our language? What do you know about our Japanese people? How will you finance this publication? Then, you know what Maximilian said? What? He said, Our Immaculate Mother will provide what we need. I am only requesting your permission. After seeing such amazing faith, the bishop decided to offer him a job as a professor at the local seminary so that he can get money to fund his Catholic newspaper. Wow, that's so nice of him. Indeed, it was really nice of him. So did he ever go back to Poland? Yes, Basil, he did. After some time, Kobe returned to Poland in poor health and he had to stay there. Not so long after, World War II started. Kobe and his friars decided to remain in Poland and continued his ministry. He stayed to provide shelter to refugees, including 2,000 Jews who were hiding from the Germans. In regard to this, Kobe said, the deadliest of the poison of that time was indifference. Really? He sounds so loving, almost like Jesus. He really was. That's why he is a saint. He carried out the words of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us. Amazing. Anyway, you told me he died in World War II. Tell us how did he die? So, in 1941, the monastery was closed by the German secret police service. Kobe and the other friars were arrested and taken as prisoners. One day, there was a prisoner who tried to escape. Unfortunately, he was caught. Now, the punishment if you get caught was to starve and they will kill you like that. When the prisoner was told of this punishment, he started shouting and he screamed, My wife, my children. On hearing this, Kobe was so sad that he generously volunteered to take his place. And he said, For Jesus Christ, I am prepared to suffer still more. After two weeks of starvation, the German guards wanted to empty the bunker. So they decided to inject Kobe with a poison. And they decided to inject Kobe with acid. Kobe calmly lifted his left arm and blessed the soldier who injected him. That's so brave of him. I wish I could be as brave as him. His, lack, his last act before he died was to bless the soldier. He died on, 40, for, he died on the 14th of August and was buried the next day, which was the feast of Our Lady of Assumption. That was so brave of him. I wish I could be as brave as him. Yes, Basil. That was very brave of him. And you know something? The life of Maximilian Mary Kobe was taken by unspeakable evil. Till his death, he was selfless and obedient. However, he was free by the love and power of God. Saint Kobe encouraged us to be devoted to Mary so that we can overcome darkness and to find strength to help other people. If Mother Mary helped him and gave him strength and courage, I will certainly devote my self to mother mary yes what is the patron saint of he is the patron saint of drug addicts prisoners families and of the pro-life movement saint john paul ii who canonized maximilian kobe said that he is the patron of purity in a difficult century thank you for sharing his story carol his story is so inspirational especially how he was able to give his life for his fellow prisoner and his family just like Jesus Christ, who died for all the humanity. That's right, Basil. Thank you, Bubbly News, for listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what a saint. A saint indeed. Lived a life so fine, stuck to the creed. There's only one way, you know. WWJD. Ah, what would Jason do? No. What would John do? No. Um, what would Jeremiah do? No, girl. Oh, I know, I know. What would Father Joseph do? No. But it's Father Joseph that taught us. 
What would Jesus do? So, I think let's sing about the one way to our Lord. Okay, left? No. Oh, right is the right way? No, no, no. One way means allowing the Lord to guide you to choose the right decision. Ah. Anyway, I think if we sing about this in song, you would understand it a lot better. Hey Bambinos! So this week, our Bible verse is John 15 verse 13. It says, No one has great love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. Wow! You know what my Bambinos? Jesus, He loves you, He loves me so much that even though we are naughty people, that we are such mischievous people, He died for you. He took so many beatings. You know, St. Bridget says that Jesus had over 5,000 wounds on his body. For whom? Just for you and for me, so that we would enjoy this world. So now, you know, my dear Bambinos, what Jesus wants from you is that your dada and your mama, who are working day and night for you, your mama who's making such amazing food for you, your dada who's working so hard in the office for you, day and night, Jesus wants you to love them, respect them, and make them happy. You know, like Jesus, he always was so obedient to Mama Mary and was so obedient to Saint Joseph. He was never naughty, he never back answered. That's what you should do. And that's what Jesus would do. Hey Bambinos, so now you'll see three videos and you'll see what Jesus doesn't find pleasing and what Jesus finds pleasing. So Bambinos here, Masia and Joan are talking and Maria joins them. But both don't seem to care for Maria. And poor Maria trying to talk to them ends up crying. So sad. Now, my dear Bambinos, Masia and Joan are talking and Maria joins them. But all of them are talking to each other. They both care for Maria and they're having a good time. It's, it's happiness, joy and lots of love in this place right now because they all are united together. My dear Bambinos, now here Masia is praying. And Joan and Maria are talking. Oh my God, that's so bad. Masia is praying and they both are talking. Now you know what happens. Masia is getting disturbed when she's praying. She doesn't like it. And she tells them to maintain silence now. And in the next video, it's seen by Minos, Masia, Maria and Joan all are praying and there is complete silence and everybody is peaceful and enjoying their prayer. Now here my Bambi knows, Masia is doing the flower arrangement and she sneezes, how to? And Joan approaches. You know what she does? She just goes and hugs Joan. Ew, that's so disgusting. Now here, Masia sneezes. Hachu! And she tells Joan to wait. She applies some hand wash and she cleans and she cleans the hands and she cleans and she's cleaning and she's cleaning and she's cleaning, cleaning, cleaning and she's cleaning and she's cleaning and she's cleaning, cleaning, cleaning and now she washes her hand with water. Yes! That is so good, right? That is so hygienic. And now, she goes and hugs Joan. Yes. Hello, Bambinos. How are you all doing? Welcome back to another day and another show. I hope all of you made the right decision because we are called to be imitators of Christ. 
in every situation and every nation. And right now, I know that Jesus wouldn't be like, woohoo, but once when the beat starts, he would be like, woohoo, you know what time it is. It's time to get moving. Let us sing one song about one way to our one God. So let's begin with the action. I lay my life down at your feet because you're the only one I need. I turn to you and you're always there. In troubled times, it's you I seek. I put you first, that's all I need. I humble all, I am all to you. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. So the next paragraph goes, you were always, always there. Every how and everywhere. Your grace abounds deep within me. You will never, ever change. Yesterday, today, the same. Forever till forever meets no end. You are the way, the truth and the life. I live by faith and not by sight. I live it all for you. And that's pretty much it. So remember, sing for Jesus, move for Jesus, dance for Jesus. Jesus, you're the only one that 
Dear Bambinos, hope you had a wonderful episode this week. We were thinking what Jesus would do at different situations. Once we know how Jesus would respond to a particular situation, we could make and solve many of our problems. Dear Bambinos, we are going to wind up this episode with a small prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Heavenly Father, we pray by your grace, by your Holy Spirit, strengthen us to make our life according to the life of Jesus. Let his words, let his action be our model. Let his wisdom, let his obedience to his parents be our strength. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bambinos, you're back. Look, Bambinos are back. So, before we sign off, we are forgetting something. Do you know what it is, Jason? No. We are forgetting our Bible words. Right? So silly of us to forget. So, let's put actions together and learn our Bible verse. Do you guys remember what the Bible verse is? Do you remember what the Bible verse is, Jason? It's John chapter 15 verse 13. What was it? John chapter 15 verse 13. That's right. So, the Bible verse starts off like this. No one has greater love than this. For this, we are going to make a big love heart to lay down so we're going to put our hands out like that to lay down one's life so our heartbeat is there right so we're going to put our hands like this who are we going to lay down our life to one's friend so for friends we're going to hold our friend's hand and that's it that's all our bible was done so let's do that together with all our bambinas and with all our actions are you ready, Jason? I'm ready. Great. Let's stand up and let's do this together, Bambinos. So, John. Chapter 15. Verse 13 says, No one has greater love than this. To lay down one's life for one's friend. So that's it, Bambinos. That's our Bible verse. I think we are forgetting something. Do you know what it is? We are forgetting to challenge our Bambinos. We have so much fun, don't we? We have so much fun seeing all your artwork. Do you remember what the challenge was for last time? To make the lantern. And we had so many lanterns that we received. So this week's challenge, what did we learn to make this time? We learned to make cake, didn't we? Not just any cake, a wonderful marble cake. I want to see all our talented Bambinos. So let's get baking and cook up a storm and send us all your submissions. So like usual, send in all your works to DivineKids at DivineUK.org So Bambinos, till next time, let's do this one final time. Can you join me? Sure. Let's do this together Bambinos. One, two, three. Here we go Bambinos. Till next time, God bless and stay blessed. Bye.
Hello, 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 hello,